So we're going to start off with another uh, very important concept, which is the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem states that the distribution of sample means approximates a normal distribution as a sample size gets larger. And this is what the normal distribution looks like. It's, it peaks around the mean and then it slowly fades away, slowly fades down to either side of the mean. Now, this is super important because quite often we do not have access to what the original distribution looks like. And if we take enough samples, if we take enough samples from the original distribution, calculate their means, and made a plot out of those means, essentially a distribution of those means, we could, in effect, get a normal distribution of that, those sample means. Right? And that helps us to understand the original population better. That is the essence of central limit theorem. But let's have a look at whether or not this holds in, in practice. And so let's just simulate this and see if this actually uh, works. Now I'm going to start with the original population um, distribution as a uniform distribution. And for that, I'm taking the dice rolls as an example which I discussed in the previous uh, video as well. Uh, but essentially, we are getting random numbers from 1 to 6, and we're getting 100,000 times, right? So we get all of these dice rolls set up in our dice rolls array, and then we find the unique values in them just as a means to get how many uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 do we have. So the unique function gives me the counts of these unique values from 1 to 6, right? How many 1s did I get? How many 2s did I get? How many? I know my unique values. They are from 1 to 6, right? And the counts then stores the number of times those unique values occurred in, this, in these 100,000 dice rolls. Now, I could visualize this, such as in this manner, and this literally shows me the number of times 1s showed up, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And this is pretty much uniform. Uh, and this is what I expect from a dice, right? A six-sided dice, which is a fair dice, has equal probability of each side landing on top, um, showing up on top, would have uh, and should have equal number of counts for these uh, numbers to show up. And this is what we see. Now, here's what's important now, and this is what we're talking about, that if you were to calculate, and this is just one experiment, right? This is one experiment which has uh, 100,000 dice rolls. Now, in this one experiment, we have one single mean value, right? If I calculate the mean value, I multiply the unique values with how many times they occur, divided by the number of these unique values, which were six, uh, which are 100,000, right? Uh, I would end up with a particular mean value for these 100,000 um, dice rolls. And in my case, if I could, I could calculate this as a mean and print it. And for me, that is 3.5, right here, 3.5. So, and it's just pretty much in the center, as it should be, right? There is some decimal value associated with it, and that is largely because there's slight unevenness right at the top, but that is okay, as long as it is um, fairly um, uniform. So, I get it, 3.5 mean value, which is right in the middle for one experiment. What the central limit theorem is telling me is that if I were to conduct multiple such experiments enough times, what I should get is a normal distribution, which means that this is one experiment and I get a mean. I perform the experiment again and I will get another mean and I do that again and I will get another mean and I do that so many times that I get so many means and then I visualize those means in a, in a, in a plot. And that should look like a normal distribution right here. So that was my first mean. And if I do this these many times, the distribution of those means would be a normal distribution. This is what central limit theorem is uh, talking about. So let's try and see if we, can, if we can perform the same experiment multiple times. Essentially, it's repeating this same, uh, same code. It's repeating this same experiment where we randomly get 100,000 dice rolls and we should calculate their mean. So let's see if there's a way we could repeat this experiment a great many number of times and then plot it. So what I'm going to do here is, is 
I'm going to define an empty list. I'm going to call it mean values. Every time I perform an experiment, I'm going to store the means in the mean values uh, empty list, okay? So if I am doing my first experiment, the first value in this would be 3.5029 right here that we had. The next time, whatever the mean is, I would store it and then I would plot it. So this will then have many uh, different mean values and at the end, I'm just going to plot this particular uh, variable to see if it is normally distributed or not. The way to do it is to use a very uh, important functionality in Python, which is uh, the for loop. We call it the for loop because this code, whatever is in this code, notice there is an indent uh, after this, and, and there's a specific syntax for using this for loop. We define an iterator. You could use this iterator. I'm not using this in this code, but just for uh, syntax, I'm, I am going to put in an iterator i, and this is a keyword for i in this particular range which is 0 to 700 so I'm going if I want to repeat this experiment 700 times I'm going to say okay let's have a range of 0 to 700 and I is in fact going to take a value from 0 and then next in the next iteration it's going to take a value of 1 and then in the next iteration it's going to be value of 2 all the way to 700 so this code whatever is here in with specific uh, indentation here is going to repeat 700 times. This is what the for loop lets me do. Okay, in terms of uh, coding, this is what is happening. This code is getting repeated 700 times. Now, and what is in this code? This is what, what we've seen just uh, before. That is exactly what we have in this code. We get these 100,000 random samples stored in dice rolls. We obtain unique values, which are one to six. We do that again but we get a count, how many of these have appeared, right? So 700 times we roll 100,000 dice, um, dice, we get 100,000 dice rolled. So, and then we calculate the mean, and the mean gets stored in the mean values. The way to store it is to use the append functionality. So we are just simply, uh, the array is empty in the beginning, we put our value of mean in it, and then the next time this gets run, the next, the second value, let's just say the second value that we get, we're running this uh, loop for the second time, the second value that we get, we append it to the first value. So uh, you could, you could in fact expect 3.5 in it uh, for the first time. And then you would expect that the second value could be 3.6. And then when the loop runs for the third time, this could be 3.4 and so on, all the way till we have uh, 700 value which could probably be 3.8 or anything right so we get this is what the append is doing first time you get a value the next time another value is appended to this third time another value is appended to that so at the end of the day I have one variable which has so many values and then I just want to plot it as I always do right I use this mean values and I just use a histogram plot I specify bins. I could specify uh, a bunch of bins. That's fine. I've just set up it to 30. Specify an edge color for the for all those uh, rectangles in the histogram, right? I call them. Uh, I use a black border, and then I just plot. So when we run this code, we run this 700 times, and we see that in fact the distribution that we get looks and approximates uh, like a normal distribution. Okay, it is centered around 3.5, which is logically uh, the mean, the original uh, mean for the dice, right? It has to be 3.5. That's the dead center for these six values. And, and then there is some uh, variation across it. It's not too much. It's going to 3.51, then it's from 3.48, right? So it's not, it's not much a variation, but it does approximate as a normal distribution. Which is to say it is centered around 3.5 and there is there is some standard deviation uh, or some variance that is uh, there to it in order to characterize this normal distribution. Uh, what I also want to do next, um, just as a on, a on a side note, is let's say I didn't have 100,000 uh, dice rolls, right? If I reduce my dice rolls to let's say just, uh, just 100 or maybe just 10 dice rolls, Let's see what that looks like. See, that kind of uh, disrupts my distribution of dice rolls. 
because these are only 10 dice rolls. Uh, we don't, uh, it's possible a number doesn't show up in 10 dice rolls, right? And then this is no more in a uniform distribution. It could be any distribution. We don't know that. Uh, and I could take, I will run this cell again just to get another 10 dice rolls. See, this time I didn't get any three. So it's possible we don't know what the distribution is originally for the population. In this case, that's the dice throws. So, so if you if you don't, and I'm just going to uh, use and this because this code is getting repeated for the next uh, one, so I'm going to just have my dice rolls set to ten. Uh, so if I have my dice rolls set to ten, that means my distribution is not uniform, and that's okay as long as I'm repeating the process uh, a good many times. Would this still result in a, un in a, in a normal distribution for the sample uh, means? That is uh, what we want to prove. And as we see that, yes, indeed, the central limit theorem still holds. It does not matter what the original distribution is, uniform or not uniform, but if you get means enough number of times, 700 times is sufficient in this case, then you will still end up with a normal distribution. So that is the essence and the beauty of central limit theorem. I hope that is uh, making sense. Thank you so much.